is writing a book even the right fit for me if I suck at writing? There are lots of ways for you to get around that, if you will. There are ways to use some AI or even just your notes feature on your phone. Like that for me was a godsend. Or while you're driving, right? You can easily set up your phone and just speak speak your ideas out. Um, so for people that don't like to write, I would not let that deter you. If you've ever written a blog, if you have a favorite blog, something you're just really passionate about, that's where you start. Yo, what's up After Hours Entrepreneur? Welcome back to the show, Mark here. And today we're joined by Melanie Boer from Influence Network Media. And what you're gonna learn today is how you can get your book launched within 120 days for less than $3,000. I know what you're saying, Mark, that sounds insane, that's crazy towns, but Melanie is gonna explain some really interesting concepts in some ways the technology is making it so easy to get your book out there. In fact, right after this episode was done, I had a long conversation with Melanie about how I could get in on the action because writing a book is on my bucket list and I think Melanie has an awesome and shockingly good and efficient way of getting it out there. So get ready, sit back, and find out how you can get your first book launched and start driving new sales and new leads. And I wanna give a special shout out to both Melanie and Riverside.fm for sponsoring today's episode. All right, DJ, you know what to do. Run the tape, let's go. Hey, Melanie, what's up? Hello there. Melanie, so excited to chat with you today because I think you're gonna solve one of the problems on my bucket list, which is writing my first book. It's on my bucket list. So I'm excited to talk about how I can do that. I love that. I love to hear it's on your bucket list too. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm a business owner. I gotta have a book. If I don't have a book, what am I doing? What am I doing with my life? That's exactly right. If everyone thought that way. <laughs> right? So at this point, you've written seven books, and I kind of want to ask you, how did you get into the book writing business? Um, absolutely. So, you know, I wrote my first solo, but for COVID and time slowing down a little bit, I don't know if I ever would. It wasn't, I, Mark, like you, it was not on my bucket list. Can you believe that? And uh, it's actually funny. I'm married to an English journalism major, and you could have never placed a bet that I would write before him. So that's kind of funny. Um, I knew that I wanted to... Um, spread the word, right? Grow my expertise, uh, create more visibility in the work that I was doing, which is for me is all around creating workplace cultures. And so I wanted to get my book into people's hands. I had something I wanted to share with the world. So for me, it was about sharing, right? Share my voice. So I wrote my book and what I started to find was more people asked me about my book than would ask me about my other business. And so I was like, man, what, this is interesting. So, uh, met Jody Brandstetter, who's my business partner with influence network media. And she kind of said, Hey, I'm having the same thing happen. I think we should take all this stuff that we've learned about how to do this. We're both business women and let's package it up and show people, you know, remove some of the barriers and show them how to do it themselves. So that's what we're doing. Super interesting. And I, I got to say, I know quite a few entrepreneurs who have also released books and they say the same thing. It, it, it almost becomes, you know, I think we oftentimes think of the website as our sales tool that's selling 365, um, 24 seven, but it, my experience with other authors and other business people is they've had that similar experience. I'm curious, how did, where do you equate that interest from coming from? Do you think it's people that read the book or they saw that you had a book? How were you, do you think that that traffic was coming into your inbox? I think it was more visibility. I think it was posting and sharing and being out there on LinkedIn, right? And it was kind of a, a following that had kind of started from that. Um, it is great marketing, right? If you're looking for something different to do and to stand out and be different and that people can get excited about, that's what we've, what we've really found, that people are excited to share in that success with you, share in that bucket list item, <laughs> right, Mark? Like you're already saying it, you're excited about it. People you just can hear it. You can hear it in their voice. They get really excited about that idea. Yeah. Love it. D definitely a good reason. Cause at the end of the day, what do I want as a business owner? I want more clients. I want more customers. Yeah, growth. growth. Yes. For sure. And you know what? That's an interesting point too. We want to attract people that see their book as a growth tool. Cause if you're writing a book to collect money, you know, you think you're going to be the next JK Rowling or 
Danielle Steele or whatever famous author you want to think of, Simon Sinek. It's probably not going to happen. In fact, like 95% of books don't sell 300 copies. Like there's a huge number out there. So you have to really be willing and able to push, you know, to, to push your book, to get it out there like you would a business card. Uh, and, and what we've actually found is kind of this magic sauce. I'm kind of giving, giving a little bit away here where if you can write a collective book. So in that, in our world, that's co-authoring. There is some, we'll call it, you know, multiplier lift that you get when you put out a book with other people because you get it in front of their audience. And that has been tremendous for our authors and, and for us as well. Okay. Yep. We got to lean into this, Melanie, because when I envision myself writing my book, it's me in a dark, dank room with a typewriter. Getting carpal tunnel (laughs) all all the time. Exactly. And, you know, the idea of co-authoring or having a collective book, I've never heard that before. Could you just give me a little bit more explanation on on what that means? What is a collective book? Absolutely. So... We've, we've found this sweet spot. We aim for about 10 authors. Uh, imagine that you know, you're talking to someone and they typically don't write for a couple reasons. Cost comes up sometimes. Uh, time, they don't have time to write 70,000 plus words. Like that's a big commitment. And then the knowledge of the process. So they're like, hey, I don't know how to, I need an editor. I need a cover design. I need formatting, proofing. I need to get on Amazon. People just don't know how to do all this. So we've we've kind of simplified that, right? Where we're saying, Hey, we can help remove those barriers. Fraction of the cost, the collective, again, let's just say you have those 10 authors. It could be a topic that we've, that we've really endorsed. So example for 2023, one of our topics that we're writing about is culture, which is a passion of mine. And we've listened to our leaders and they want to write about entrepreneurship. They want to write about technology, communication. So we have certain themes that come up. And in those examples, myself or Jody, we're the, what we call collective leaders. So we would gather up people across the U.S., even beyond the U.S., which is kind of exciting, to write about their passion topic. And we tell authors, you only have to commit to a couple things. Your chapter, which is between 1,500 and 3,500 words, quality over quantity. That's really what we want. So your chapter, your headshot, your bio. You're submitting those things. We're doing all the work behind the scenes. And that plus, you know, imagine, right, we have 10 authors. We ask everyone to meet their deadlines. We know we, we're corralling cats, so we want to simplify the process. So meet deadlines and then be and be involved. Those are somewhat easy, but we need to tell busy business people to, you know, stay involved, listen, you know, work with your editor, meet your deadlines, and be involved on launch day. That's another huge piece. So when we set the launch day up, we tell everyone, hey, you need to get yourself... 30 to 35 supporters who are willing to buy your book on launch day. And that's really important as a solo artist. You know, if I'm a solo author, I would need to get 250 to 300 myself again, that magic in, Hey, I only need 30 to 35 people willing to buy my book and support me on launch day. It's that collective share, right? I don't need to find 300. That was for, for my solo trying to find the 300 was actually really stressful. Uh, people will tell you they'll buy it, but, but will they, and how do you make it happen? So those are the main things so that your headshot, your bio, your chapter, participate and find your supporters, meet your deadlines. Like those are the things that we're doing, but we've broken it down into those pretty simple steps. It makes a lot of sense to me because the idea of finding 300 people to buy my book, that's a, that seems like a lot. The idea of writing, I don't know what the number you said, 75,000 words. I'm, I got a business to run. I, I don't know how I could do that. So this idea of kind of sharing it. It's, it's almost the idea of, you know, kind of like being on a panel, right? Or, or hosting an event with multiple people involved because you can kind of, you, you get that power, that halo effect type of, type of deal. We want people to share those best practices, right? If you can have industry leaders that are out there talking about what they know best and their passion and hone it into one great chapter, that's sharing, Right your best practice and you don't have to dilute it and, you know, come up with the tons and tons of words. You can focus on quality over quantity. What's the, what's the downside? Like, why would I really want to write a solo book when I can get something out much more quickly with much less effort in the collective with the collective strategy? Why would, what's the downside? Why would I want to do a solo book? Well, and you know, solo is not really a negative. We do solos. I'm not going to talk people out of that. There's a lot more cost involved in doing it all yourself. Uh, and, and, you know, you'll hear prices between 
I heard recently it was seventeen thousand to thirty thousand dollars to get out a good solo. Um, much bigger price tag uh, related to those. So there's with a solo, there's a little more ego involved, right? Like this is this is me. I'm the name on the cover. I'm the one driving it. Uh, some people have so much to say that they that they really can. They can fill a book. You know, um, I guess I'm one of those verbose people, um, and so. If you have a ton to say, example, you know, I, my solo is broken down into this cool cult, cultural model that we do, but there's six areas. Well, that was, those are easy chapters, right? Like six easy chapters. So again, depends on if you have something where you can already build out what's the structure, how does it work? And another cool piece that we're doing with Influence Network Media is we've created a course. So you'll have people come forward and say, I don't know how to do this. I don't even know how to structure my chapter or my book. And we'll say, hey, we've put it all into a learning management system where you can go in and watch as many videos as you want or as little. And we talk about how to brainstorm your writing, how to set it up, how to, you know, appeal to your writer or your reader, um, as well as things like how to market your book. Right. So we're teaching people as we go, how to, how to do this and all the things that we've learned about writing. And that's one of the things that I'm kind of getting from this conversation is we kind of examine what it's going to look like for me to launch my first book which again, bucket list item, it's happening. I'm committing to it. I don't know exactly when, but it's got to happen. One of the things I like, Melanie, is it sounds like you've got a framework. When, When I hear you talk, you say, this is how many words you need to write. This is how many people need to buy, buy the book. And so I'm kind of curious, you know, you, it sounds like you really want at least 300 people to buy the book. That's like the number. And when you, when you do it collectively, you can spread that out. Mm -hmm. Why do I need 300 people to buy my book at launch? Great question. So it's a little bit of playing the, some people will say it's a misnomer, but playing the Amazon bestseller game a little bit. We though believe in it. We know that it works. You have to have so many people buy, right? It's a, it's a sales number. And so when you have so many buy, you can kind of uh, hate to say flood the market on that day. You can surpass the Simon Sinek's of the world who might own that business title uh, in that category. So we have an entire pre-launch marketing strategy. We go in, we help set the categories. We know how many we have to sell to win that category. Um, we take all the appropriate screenshots so we can prove that we were the the winner of that you know uh, bestseller title. And then there's these new release awards you can win as well. So like the number one new release for the day. And those are a big deal. That's again, great for marketing, great for something that you can kind of, can, you can hang your hat on and say, I was the number one new release in business entrepreneurs or, you know, small business and time management, whatever it is, whatever the topic is. And we help people set those categories as well. That's part of the research and the marketing strategy that we put into it. It makes total sense, right? If, if you're not on the first page, page of Google, you don't exist. You, you might, you might as well not even have a website if you're not on the first page of Google. And, you know, I have a friend who runs a very large Amazon infrastructure. He coaches and teaches people. And you're right. It's it, when I hear him talking, cause we talked about it. I was like, bro, you're speaking another language right now. I don't, you know, I, I don't have the time to learn this Amazon stuff. It's, it's just, it's a lot. It's, it's a science to get, to get ranked and be on that first page. It is a lot. And, you know, we have a kind of a a checklist that we walk through, right? Where we're, we're telling people here, we know you're busy. We know you're a business leader. You don't have time to do this. Let us take that pain point away from you. And we can still make sure that you're seeing successes and, you know, and doing those things. Um, one of the funny things you mentioned was getting out on Google it is cool to Google your name and see it come up with a book title, right? Or even on Amazon. Like my mother got a huge kick out of that. She's like, I put your name in on Amazon and you you come up and I'm like, isn't that, that's pretty cool. I mean, my, well, I guess I'm finally making mom proud. I don't know. (laughs) So uh, that's kind of a cool element too. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's, uh, you know, and I think when it comes to influence, a lot of people go different ways. You know, I run a podcast agency, so, you know, I help clients with that. Um, podcasting is, you know, it's a large commitment. The cool thing about a book, right, is once it's there, it's there. And it makes for, I guess, a nice trophy on the desk. It's really great for developing authority, too, is something that I've heard. You become known as an authority in a space because you have a book. Yes. you're. So the reasons we found that people write authority, credibility, those are absolutely at the top. Just sharing. We say find your voice, share your voice, right? Amplify your voice. Uh, some people want to leave a legacy, right? That they, it's there forever. 
going to have this book out there. Uh, we, we are kind of ideal client is someone though that wants to grow their business. They want more clients. They want to maybe podcast. They want speaking engagements. Like what is it, what is it they really want? They want to be an influencer in some, some way, shape or form. And so you may not have that aspiration. You may just want to be an author and that's, that's okay too. What we found though, is that a lot of our business consultants, coaches, people that are writing with us have that next level of aspiration, right? Not only grow their business, but do that next thing. So while we focused the last two years on authorship, we've had so many people ask us, okay, well, what's next? Or I have a book. Now what do I do with it? And so we've started developing author to influencer, which is that, okay, so now I have a book. Now what do I do? And so there are packages that we put out on our site that are basically like, Hey, I can just write a book and be happy. Awesome. Or I can do that and podcast or get a list of podcasts. And, you know, I start, that's more in the influence column and get some more customized marketing. And then there's the VIP package, which that's includes all of those. Plus, um, talking with people about how they can turn what they're, what they're doing into a course or how they can create a presentation, how they can get up and be a speaker, uh, that next, like, that next level stuff. And that's why we needed different packages, right? Cause it, it apply it, different people want different things. Uh, we have some people that are like, Nope, I just wanted to do it so I could do it. Check it off my bucket list. Um, one lady wanted to do it as professional development and she got her big corporate company to pay for it. Cause they were like, Hey, you're a leader. You want to share your voice. Awesome. And, uh, you know, she wrote and it was a huge stretch of pride. And I know the company bought some books and, you know, they got given it out to her department and things, but people write for a variety of reasons. I'm curious, you know, you've worked with 74 different authors now in just the last few years. Um, what percentage of business owners actually have books? Do you know, do you have a stat on that? I'm, I'm curious. I don't have one currently. I know when I first started looking, it was not a, a huge number. I mean, it was like yeah. less than, I want to say less than 2%. There's not a huge number out there. I, I'm sure that's probably changed. I don't know. I wonder if that's a COVID change. I, I wonder if more people became authors because of COVID because we had nothing to do for a short time. Uh, but I don't know that exactly. I also think there's, there's kind of this misnomer that, you know, I don't need a book. I need to make YouTube videos. And I'm, I don't disagree that making YouTube videos is not important. Like it's, I'm, I'm all on board, but you know, I, re I read every day. I read every day. And, and I will say, Melanie, that reading has probably been one of the top reasons that my business is taking off right now because there's, it, it's just so valuable. And one of the things I found a lot of these authors do, like Alex Hormozzi, for example, he sells his book for 99 cents because he knows that if, you, if, he, if he fixes your small problem in that chapter, you're going to come back to him for bigger problems. And I find that to be a very effective way of of leveraging content, and in this case, books. The, the problem though I have here, Melanie, is I'm kind of bouncing into idea after idea really fast because you've got my brain like operating all sorts of different circuits here. I love is it. I'm, I'm not exactly, I don't love writing. I'm okay. I, I wouldn't say I'm a terrible writer. Thanks to GPT, chat GPT, I'm a little bit better, but I, I'm not a great writer. It, it, is writing a book even the right fit for me if I suck at writing? <laughs> I think that's funny. Uh, I am also not, I don't fashion myself. That's funny, right? After this many books, I don't fashion myself a great writer. Uh, there are lots of ways for you to get around that, if you will. So, you know, I thought I pictured myself sitting over my computer, getting backache and carpal tunnel and stuff. And, and that just didn't happen. Um, there are ways to use some AI or even just your notes feature on your phone. Like that for me was a godsend. You know, I can remember chasing my husband out of the bedroom at night because I was verbally going through my book, right? And he's like, do you have to do that now? And I'm like, yes, I have ideas. Um, or while you're driving, right? You can easily set up your phone and just speak speak your ideas out. Um, so for people that don't like to write, I would not let that deter you. If you've ever written a blog, if you have a favorite blog, something you're just really passionate about, that's where you start. Uh, you know, we say, you know, our minimum chapter, like 1500 words, that's a blog on steroids. So there are people that get just overwhelmed at the thought and we don't want that. We, we also have coaches. We've simplified the process so that we, we feel really good about. You don't have to worry about the headache of it. Just get the words out, get them on paper. We have editors that can help with that help with coaching. 
Uh, and you, you, know, you could hire a ghostwriter if you really wanted, if you want to invest some extra funds. And uh, But there are a variety of ways. So I would not let that deter, deter me. Makes sense. Makes sense. Again, a lot of tools to make it happen. What's up, After Hours Entrepreneur? Mark here with an important message for you. You do not want to look bad and sound bad online. You don't want it. I don't want it. And your fans most certainly don't want it. I need to tell you from personal experience that the best way to improve the quality of your content is with Riverside.fm. Riverside.fm is my go-to for recording the highest quality podcast and video content from anywhere. So why use Riverside? Well, Riverside is going to give you the highest quality 4K video recordings. You're also going to get uncompressed, crispy, clean audio. Honestly, the best that I've seen. You're going to get separate tracks recorded when you're interviewing people and collaborating, which makes it very easy to change your audio levels. In fact, Riverside is even going to give you a video editor and social media clip creator directly within the program. Listen, it's time to avoid looking bad and start looking amazing. And the best way to do that is with Riverside.fm. Start free today and use code friends of Mark for a special offer. Again, get started with Riverside.fm. Use code friends of Mark and start looking and sounding like your best self today. All right, let's get back in the episode. So your, your company, Influence Network Media, that's it, inmauthor.com, giving free consultations right now. So if you're kind of considering, definitely check out Melanie. So far after talking with her, she's awesome. You definitely want to talk to her. That's inmauthor.com. Another one of the, the thoughts that I have here is we talk about this collective book idea, which I didn't even know about until a few minutes ago, which makes it very appealing, is the idea of collaborating with the other business owners you know, it, it, your agency, are you actually, you're going out and finding the authors and putting them together in a book. It, have you seen any success stories where one author connects with another author and business comes from that? Are there any advantages to that? Absolutely. Uh, in fact, in our, I think it was our marketing fusion, we did a, a business, these are all business books. So we're doing a lot of uh, nonfiction writing. There's no love in werewolves and all that kind of stuff. So we did this marketing fusion book and we had an author come forward right away and say, Hey, just from meeting the other people in the book who do different things, right? Some are, I'm trying to remember all my areas, but a marketing strategist, a funnels person, an SEO person, right? Website, like people, there's so many different areas of marketing and they wanted to hone in on their specific skill. The one lady was like, I already made five times my investment back because I partnered with this woman and she needed my services with her client. Right? So we're, we're definitely seeing that. Um, when you said we gather the authors, we do, you know, I, I have areas that people, again, people will come forward and say, I'd love to see a book on this. And when we hear that over and over, that's where we know to hone in. But what we also love, love, love is when someone comes forward and says, Hey, I'm a leader, I'm a thought leader. And I want to see these people in a book with me, with our name on the cover. We're, we already have an idea. We're passionate about this topic. Again, leadership could be anything. Uh, IT, pick a business topic. And we want to write about it. And when you do that and you all pull together, I love, we call those external collectives. So we do internal when we think of it. Great. And some people want to know this part. And I love, I love saying this because we're very transparent. When we do those and we lead them, we we are the publisher and we get the royalties, but we encourage our collective authors, uh, to, okay, let me go back a little bit. The, remember how we said you can sell the book for like a dollar 99. Those are typically the eBooks, right? So on launch day, we launch the book for a dollar 99. We sell it. People get excited. They are more than willing to support you for two bucks, right? My mother though, I can hear her saying, I don't want an eBook, Melanie. I want the paperback. Okay, great. So we launched the paper book back a week later. And that's very intentional. We need the numbers in the ebook to win those, right? Bestseller, Amazon bestseller, number one, you release categories. When we launch the paperback a week later, the reason why we're doing that is we're not trying to collect 
profits on those. We can through Amazon, but we want our, let's say 10 authors from that book to come forward and say, okay, Melanie, order me paperbacks and I'm going to sell them for profit. So we do the print on demand through Amazon. Again, we've got that all figured out. Let's just say you can get books for $5 from us as your publisher. We'll get them to you, get them shipped to you and you can sell them at your speaking events from the trunk of your car, I don't know, however you want to sell books and make from your website and you can make a profit that way. But the biggest way, right, is you want to gain the client. You want to maybe sell them at speaking events, those kinds of things. Um, okay. So that was, I was talking through the, how to make money. Ooh. And here's where I was going with that. If you were to say to me though, Melanie, I already have my group and why are you getting the royalties? I'd say, absolutely. If you come to us with a group of leaders and you say, hey, we want to write, we want at least six, by the way, at least six writers, we max out at 14, 10 is the sweet spot, but I want to write, I have my group, awesome. The collective leader, whoever that is, whoever's corralling the cats and pulling them together, we're the publisher, you get the royalties. That's really the, and there are some that publishers out there that get pieces of the royalties. We don't do that. We're very much trying to help people make this happen on their own. So again, that collective leader can gather the, gather the troops, get them all writing. We do all the behind the hands, behind the scenes stuff and they get the royalties from the ebook and from the paperbacks. So I mean, and this all makes sense. And I like, you know, but even before we started recording, we were talking about how you kind of structure custom packages based on what the business owner wants to accomplish. Cause there's all sorts of ways to structure this stuff. Like I have some sponsors for my show that, um, you know, all they want is if they just want to share affiliates, some pay up front, some, um, share commission. So there's, there's different ways I think to structure this stuff based on expectation. Like I don't, to your point, I don't expect to sell 250,000 bucks, right? That, but if I could land a few clients that, that would be a win. So I think kind of processing, you know, what the value of one lifetime client would be is important. When I think about that, one of the questions I have, Melanie, we've kind of touched on this at the beginning is again, busy business owner over here. I don't have time to be on my typewriter, you know, and you've kind of typed, talked about what the expectation is about 1500 words. I'm kind of curious if I said, Hey, Melanie, let's go, let's do this thing about how much time, like on an hour perspective, would I expect to spend and about how long would it take to get the book live? Great question. So timeframes. We see most people taking around six weeks to write their chapter. But I will tell you, I had someone take two days, right? That was, they already knew what they wanted to write. They had their initial, uh, I think it was a blog and they grew it out. And I've had other people that, you know, we gave them a year and that still wasn't enough time because it just wasn't a priority for this person for whatever reason. They thought they wanted it, but they really didn't we want the people that really want it. Right. Uh, and they can typically turn it out much quicker. So I'd say planning on about six weeks to write. And then once we know we have the people committed and on board, and again, we've simplified that process too. We have an online application you can pay online. You, so you can do this from across the country, across the world. Um, we say it's a three to four month process. So you could either back into it. You could say, Hey, I know I want to launch this for whatever Thanksgiving. So let's back this in and let's, you know, three to four months is the total time frame. Cool. It's really not that long. That's 90, that's 90 days to 120 days. That's like yeah. a quarter. <laughs> you could have it released yep. in a quarter. The other, the other thing that I'm thinking about is, you know, the topic of being evergreen. Because when I think about a book, I'm like obsessed with AI. Everyone that's listening to the show now realizes that like AI has completely transformed my life and my business. But if I was to write a chapter on AI, it might be irrelevant in six months, you know? So True. when I think about what I'd want to write about, you know, how, how specific do I want to be? Do I want to talk about kind of like broad strokes type of stuff or do I want to get really granular and technical with my chapter? That's a great question. Uh, I think it, depends. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that middle of the road answer. I think it depends because you want it to be enough that appeals to your target audience, right? You're giving them the golden nuggets. They're getting excited about it. They want to learn more, but I also think it's okay to, to be kind of transparent in your writing and say, Hey, by the way, I know this is going to change, but you can always reach me. And that's why when we include people's bios, uh, you know, they can reach you, they can reach out through LinkedIn or for whatever. And you can say, Hey, let's, let's talk. This is an ever changing thing. And I'd love to 
you know, connect with me because I'll keep you up on the most recent ideas or, you know, things that are happening. So we, we do all the books as a collective of short stories too. So that's important to, to keep in mind. So we've never had anyone come forward and want to write the exact same thing or tell the exact same stories. You know, that's, that's part of writing is trying to figure out, right, what am I going to put in there? Am I going to tell stories and figuring out people that work together well in that blend. So as you were just saying, AI, one of the books that I'm going to be corralling cats for, uh, no, that's not, I mean that in the nicest way possible. Hopefully people are cat fans. Um, <laughs> one of the books that we're going to be gaining, I don't know, casting, what do we say? I need a good word for that. What we're going to be get, gathering authors for leaders to become authors is around communication. So imagine we're writing a book about communication. Absolutely. That's going to change over time, like how we communicate today. But if, everyone did a different chapter. Maybe someone is talking about how we podcast today or how AI works today or whatever. Think about what drives your business, right? I have coaches that want to focus on how we communicate based on our disc styles, right? Like there's so much you could talk about how we communicate and it would be a really cool book to hear all those best practices and things and how they're changing. And, um, could it be evergreen? Probably. I'm sure there's some fundamental truths and communication that just don't change, but there's always going to be that next new thing as well. Yeah. Well, in, in the fact that, you know, we're talking about getting a book live within 90 days and the main goal of writing this book is to generate leads and new business. It, I, it feels to me like you could be pretty targeted because what you're trying to do, it sounds like is really blow out the market, blast out the market. You're sharing it, not just with your 30 people, but with the other 300 that the other people, the other co- co-authors are bringing in that'll read plus hopefully more are going to buy it. If I know I'm going to make, I don't know, $20,000 per, per client or something like that, you know, it, it seems like you could be pretty hyper-targeted I'm, and I'm curious and, and, and listen, y'all as of today, it's February of 2023. I don't expect Melanie's prices to be the same forever, but you know, we talked about the time commitment. What about financial commitment? How much does it cost me to kind of get involved in a collective book drop? Absolutely. And you know, I don't usually start with this, but I'm going to put it out there. Mark, what's the value to you of having a book out there? What would you say the value is of writing a book? And you just mentioned a $20,000 client, right? So like, can you put a value on it? And then I'll, I will answer your question. I promise. Well, yeah. So it's, 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 again, it's kind of tough to say, right? So I think that the SEO part is really important. I want to show up. I want when my mom or my kid types in my names, like, Oh, you know, daddy wrote a book, mom wrote a book that it's a cool thing. Again, a very cool thing to say. Um, but you know, if let's say for example, I landed one launch client that could be 10 to 15 K over the course of a couple years, you know, the returns on the book are much more than the cost. So just to kind of give you an idea, we have those three levels that we talked about. You can see those on the site as well. But the typical starting point right now is like 1097. So I'm saying 1000. So $1,100 is the initial starting package through about 2,500. And so where I've had people come back and answer that question mark and they'll say, I'd pay a couple thousand dollars to do this. And the answer is awesome. You could get the VIP package for that, right? Like it's, it really is, we're, it's cost effective because you're also, we're able to to blend our costs. My most expensive thing on my book was my cover. It cost me $1,200 just for a book cover because I didn't know all the ways to format it. I needed it for both ebook and paperback. I needed it, the spine to be a certain size, like all that stuff you don't know. Uh, I had to spend a lot on my designer, right? To, to make sure we could tweak it. Well, you don't have to do that. And we can, we're cost sharing. So we're cost sharing the editors, the designers, the proof, you know, getting it all done and making it happen. So I think that, that it's a bargain. You'll have lots of people say, okay, I can just write that off as an expense, right? Yeah. It's a yeah. business expense. It's a marketing expense. Um, and it is, can be very worthwhile. Yeah. It's honestly, that price seems way too low to me to be, to be fair. <laughs> we should be charging more. I know I've said this before. Uh, and, and we've actually kind of gradually increased a little bit. I mean, I think there was a time when we were in the like 800 to a thousand range, maybe what we realize is we just spend a lot of money on our editors and, and designers and stuff, um, as well as some of the different softwares and things that you need to make this happen. Uh, for the record, there's not a ton of money in book, book, book publishing either, but what we're, where we're finding our real value is in 
even the network that we're creating. Right. And so as an example, I, I have another business and I am becoming very well I hate to even say that. How am I like tooting my own horn? I, I'm I'm growing my network, right? I'm constantly talking to people. I'm talking to business leaders. And so they'll come back and say, like, what else do you do? Like, you know, and, and it's been good for business all around, uh, which I love. And I'm for anyone that, you know, I'm sure you'll probably say this, but if we connect online, like you can kind of see I'm in the business of helping people. And so whether that's with writing a book or creating a great workplace, that's my other, you know, I really want to help people thrive. And that's something that I would like to be known for. So, yeah, I mean, this is, 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 you know, listen, that, that bucket list item is starting to become more and more of reality for me. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm, uh, this is, this is kind of, this is kind of cool. Cause you know, like, you know, like you said, again, podcast agency, I, I build, I launch and grow podcasts for clients. The reality though is the vast majority of people are going to never make a dollar from their podcast itself, right? You're not going to make money from the subscribers, um, you know, the ad sense, the sponsors, most people won't, but if you can land one client, it, it completely pays for itself mm -hmm. immediately. And, and I, I, I love that model as a different way of looking at your marketing instead of just running Facebook ads or TikTok ads or something, there's a little bit more long game. And th there's a mindset shift that has to happen there, right? Because I think initially that the people that came to us would ask those questions, like, how much money am I going to make from this book? And then we were like, that's not our target audience. Like if you're coming in saying, how many books do I have to sell to make my whatever, right? $1,100 back or around a thousand dollars back. Um, a lot of books, <laughs> you know, you gotta sell. but if I get one client or I get one speaking gig and that's where kind of that next piece comes into play. Uh, there are a lot of us that are out there speaking and, I can take myself out of this category now that don't know how to leverage themselves to be a paid speaker. And so a book helps you do that, right? So it could either be, um, oh, and I have this book. Oh, hey, Melanie, we want you to come speak. Great. Here's, here's my rate. And they'll be like, oh, well, we don't have a budget for that. Right? How many times people say that, right? So we've got some things we do to help people overcome that, overcoming those objections. And, but the other piece is you could say, oh, okay, well, how many people are attending? a hundred. Okay. Well, if you could buy a hundred of my books, I'll give you a discount. Again, let's just quick do the math. It costs me about $5 per book. If I give them the book for 15, I say, Hey, you can have the books at a discount for 15. Cause they sell on Amazon for 20. We know I'm making about $10 per book, right? hundred people. I just made a quick thousand dollars on something that I may not have been able to get paid for in the past. Right? Mm. So there's like this little bit mm. of a switch. Sometimes you can flip for people as well that they didn't even realize that they were missing. And, and to be honest, sometimes you can't even get speaking gigs without a book, right? I, I've had lots of people say like, enter your book here. And it's like, oh, I'm glad that I have something I can put in that category. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, and it's, you're making, a, Melanie, you're making a lot of sense right now. I like you're making to make a sense. lot of sense. I think <laughs> I might, I honestly, as soon as this is over, I think I'm going to go to inmauthor.com. And I'm a scheduled free consultation because I want to learn. I want to learn more. I mean, that you, know, you know, I'm spending more than this on a monthly basis on advertising. So, you know, to, to get a book out on the shelves um, makes a lot of sense. I'm also curious about uh, voiceover. You know, do you do you is that something you think is important? You know, I was, for example, my 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 boy Roberto Blake released a book recently and um, I didn't have enough time to read it. But when I was in the gym, pop my headphones in, and I let Alexa read it to me. Um, but I, was, I told my, my friend, Roberto, Roberto Blake, I was like, you know, I, I want Roberto's voice. I don't want the robot's voice. How important do you think having voiceover work is? Is that part of your package? What should I be thinking about when it comes to voiceover work? That is a great question. So we do have an audible package. That's not something right now that just comes with it. Cause that costs extra. Uh, we have some voiceovers. You can choose a man or a woman, you know, those kinds of things. But I have a lot of people and even myself, I haven't done an audible for conscious culture yet. My main book, uh, because I want to read it or people will, people will say to me, I hear you when I read the book, I can hear your voice. And I'm like, Oh, that's so sweet. And then I'm like, what if I put that book out with someone else's voice? They're going to be mm. highly annoyed with me. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know if you should let it deter you or not, but it's much easier to get it put out when you do a voiceover. Most people don't have the equipment, the editing. I mean, you probably could mark because you have the equipment, um, but there's a lot of people that just couldn't do that. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, an, I'm a podcaster. I've been doing this for years. So, 
it's, uh, you know, definitely very natural to me. Um, so, so, I mean, this is super interesting. I, and I'm kind of wondering, right? Like you have seven books now and you started how long ago? A few years ago? Yeah, we, so I launched my, my book was launched in 21 and June of 21. And that was our first official book. We were the first, that was our first publish. And so we're not even two years in yet. I, I keep saying a year and a half, but we're getting closer to two years. Um, and yeah, it's been, it's been awesome that there's definitely no lull, uh, in, in work. In fact, our coaches have advised us we should be spending all of our time on this because it's so much fun and so awesome. And it's like, wait a minute, I actually really like both my businesses. And it's like, when you have another kid, you don't forget about the first one. Right. So, yeah. so that's what I'm balancing. Yeah, no doubt. What was the biggest surprise that you had when you released your first book? What's that one thing you were like, holy cow, I can't believe this is true. What, what was your biggest surprise in your first book? Um, my biggest surprise. Well, one of the things that I had to get over was that feeling of, uh, you know, like when you're a speaker and they say, picture people in their underwear. I don't know if, do they still say that? That might be totally inappropriate, <laughs> but it was the opposite feeling. Like I felt like I was really exposed, right? Like I was bearing my soul and telling people all my stories and secrets. And I, you know, I had even worked in things about my personal life or my quotes from my dad and I made it, it was very personal. Um, so for me, that was a bit of a challenge to kind of overcome, but, but the compliments and the buildup that came from it was worth it. Um, I did have, um, uh, I don't give too, too much here, but I did have someone approach me about one of the stories in there that um, they recognized, even though I changed the names and, you know, that they recognized themselves in and they were like, hey, is this a, I think I know this story. And I was like, you do. And so that was a little bit of a, a challenging moment. But as we ex talked our way through it, obviously I kind of made my way out of that, out of that situation. But I also said, hey, I'm a writer and I, you know, I'm sorry, I might've embellished a little bit, but that was my perspective and it was still an honest perspective. Um, and so anyways, haha, we're still on good terms, me and this person, but it was kind of a funny, one of those funny things that I did have to learn. Right. And remember, no matter what you're writing, people are going to read it and interpret it however they want through their own lenses. And you got to be okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's an interesting point. In, imposter syndrome a gets in a lot in a way a lot of times that feeling of mark i can't create a video because then people will look at me and i don't like the way my hair looks and 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 that's obviously you gotta you gotta kill that y'all you gotta kill that um and the other the other thing sometimes you know i'll feel like uh, nobody's probably gonna watch this anyway so i'll just tell this story and then when the person reaches out it's like oh yeah you know i i hope you gain some value from it because that was my that was my perspective on, on that experience, you know, Su super fascinating stuff. And, and I think, listen, y'all for every business owner out there, this is probably something we should be thinking about. It's, you know, it, it, we, we don't live in a one dynamic world right now. Um, and the other thing I think about, right. Is I, is I really adopt artificial intelligence into my business and my workflow is authenticity. And I do feel like having a book out there, having a physical book, something that is tangible that people can hold kind of brings another level of authenticity to, to what you do. So I, I, there's just a lot of advantages. Again, I'm definitely going to your website right now, I N M author.com. And I'm going to sign up for consultation because this looks like it's in my budget. It helps me check off that bucket list item. The, the next thing, Melanie, if you can help me with is running a marathon. If you can help me run that marathon, uh, that's the other thing on my bucket list that I'm a little concerned about. That's, that's going to be, that might be on there for a while. Cause I can tell you that's not one that I've, that I'm on my way towards, but uh, yeah, if you had told me something more like um, I'm good at fasting or drinking my water, but not the marathon. Sorry, Mark. Uh, it wasn't my thing. It's, it's definitely on the bucket list. Uh, probably will be for a few more years. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, Melanie, we're about to get into the rapid fire section, the world famous after hours entrepreneur rapid fire. Before we get there, Melanie, tell me where's the best way that I can find you. Where's the best place to find you? I would love for people to find me on LinkedIn. That's probably my favorite social media. Uh, so just look me up under Melanie Boer. It, I think it says culture coach after my name, but that is me. And I would love to, uh, to be connected with all these amazing thought leaders and people that want to find their voice. Brilliant. Guess what, y'all? I'm going to make it easy. I'll put a link below so you can just click that link and uh, connect with Melanie. Great, great, great stuff. Melanie, rapid fire. You ready? I think. <laughs> All right. I'll be gentle. It's not going to okay. be that bad. But we're going to start off with 
What is the scariest movie you have ever seen? Oh, Jaws. I'm a Jaws. I'm afraid of Jaws. Mm. Oceans now too because of Jaws. And that's not even that scary. I know you're making fun of me. I think it's actually rated PG, but yeah. No, but it's terrifying. You know, and, and I'll tell you what. <laughs> Um, I live in South Florida. The first time I went scuba diving in the open ocean, I, I, I had, you know, sometimes it's not the things that you can see, but it's the things that you can't see that are the scariest. Yeah. Cause I'll tell you the first time I jumped in the open ocean, I was like, holy crap, this is crazy. It's, it's, it's kind of a wild feeling. Um, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Oh, I'm kind of a homebody. I love Cincinnati. I don't. I think I'd want to live here, but I'd like to have another home somewhere else if that's where we're going with that. So I would, I'm thinking I'd like a home in the Carolinas as well. Sorry, Mark, it's not Florida. That, the Carolinas are beautiful. No, no <laughs> hating over here. Uh, if you could sit next to anyone on a plane, who would you sit next to? Oprah. I don't know why I love Oprah. <laughs> oh, she's amazing. Uh, who yeah. is the most underrated creator out there today? Who's the most underrated creator? Uh, I don't know. Underrated creators. I want to say like someone that, that I just know, like, um, Claire Long, she's a neighbor and friend and she's an artist that is come in Cincinnati. I'm going with Claire. Claire, shout out, shout out. You're doing something shout right. Out to Claire. Mel Mel Melanie's giving you some love. So you're doing something right. What's your favorite book? Pay It Forward by Catherine Ryan Hyde. And it is, it's the pay it forward idea of, right? We do profound things for others and hopefully they pay it forward, not just buy coffee at Starbucks, but do something profound for others and hopefully they pay it forward as well. Brilliant. Love it. And a final question here for you, Melanie. If you had 10 seconds with yourself 10 years ago, what would you say? I'd say lean in to all those uncomfortable things. Uh, make good choices in who you partner with because that's very, very important. And um, <laughs> I, I would say be comfortable with the uncomfortable. It's okay, to, it's okay to feel that way when you feel that fluttery feeling. You're doing the right thing by saying, hey, I think I should try that because that's tended to be successful for me. So that's it. keep leaning in. Get comfortable with discomfort. Love it. Love it. Melanie said it. I certainly agree with it. Melanie. Thanks for joining the After Hours Entrepreneur today. Thank you so much for having me. Boom, mic drop. And that is how you do it here on the After Hours Entrepreneur. I, is your mind blown? Because when Melanie explained this idea of collective book writing and the price that she can get it out there, I, I just see all the advantages. And it's so, so powerful. Very excited to go deep with Melanie on this. And I just thank you for listening to the podcast. Keep tuning in, baby. I'm going to give you the actionable ways to grow your freaking business. You need more sales, higher profit, and that's what the After Hours Entrepreneur is going to do for you. Thanks for listening and subscribing, and we'll catch you here next time on the Shizzo. I don't know why I just said Shizzo, but it's all good. This is Mark Savant signing off. Now it's your turn. Go take the action. Peace.